express on behalf of the family uh, their appreciation for gathering in such numbers here this afternoon to, to say your farewell uh, to Joyce. The committal will be private, and so uh, the family will just make their way out of the church after the service to the grave, and after that you're free to go. So thank you. This is a service of remembrance for Joyce. We will be paying tribute to her. It's a service for mostly to bring worship to God, and we'll begin that now as we uh, bow our heads in prayer. We'll pray. Our gracious God, you are a good God, and you're one who loves the people that you made. You loved us so much that you left heaven, came here, gave up your life to die on a cross, all that to offer eternal salvation to everyone who believes. And so we begin this service of worship by thanking you with gratitude in our hearts for that greatest ever act of love. And may we respond to it with heartfelt faith and a lifelong commitment to follow you. And we thank you for your commitment over the course of our life to us. Lord, you lead and you guide, you protect and you provide in multitude of ways, more than we can ever count, all throughout the course of our years on earth. You are the good shepherd who takes us through life and even through death. The psalm tells us that when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even there you tell us not to fear, even there you comfort and care for us. And so on this occasion, at Joyce's funeral, at the death of a mother, a grandmother, a daughter, a sister, a loyal friend of so many, this family need your comfort and care. They have lost someone very dear to them. And so in a very special way, Lord, would you be with them? Helen and Maya, Mariah, Sam, Lynn and Jill, their families, all the friends, all who miss and mourn. We pray that your presence would be real to each person today. We ask your blessing on each home represented. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing the two, uh, the first of two wonderful hymns. We'll stand to sing, uh, what a day, or there is coming a day when no heartaches shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. Speaking of heaven, we'll sing this wonderful hymn.
Please be seated. Uh, Sarah, uh, Joyce's niece, is going to come and read Joyce's favourite psalm, Psalm 16. Thank you, Sarah. Hi, I just wanted to say something about this version of this psalm before I read it. Um, as you'll hear today, Joyce was a woman of deep faith. And, well, I grew up with Helen and my mum Lynn and my auntie Joyce were sisters as well as lifelong best friends. And I knew Joyce as a very kind and a very intelligent person. <coughs> And I was speaking to my mom last night, and she said that Joyce didn't just read the Bible, she studied it deeply, and she wanted to really understand it at a cellular level and integrate the wisdom of the Bible into her own life. And Joyce was actually writing the Bible out for many years, and I only discovered this yesterday when I saw her personal work, which you've seen on display as you've come into the church. It encompasses thousands of pages stored in numerous folders and when she was writing she studied it and she also interpreted the bible in a way that really resonated with her personally and this folder that i'm going to read from is the book of psalms in joyce's own rendering um, she didn't change the message but she wrote it in a way that really brought it to life in her own life um, yeah, so this is her favorite psalm, and I've been reading it over and over in the past 24 hours. I've just felt very deeply moved by her own version, and, and so this is it. Protect me, God, because I trust in you. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Every good thing I have comes from you. As for the godly people in the world, they are the wonderful ones I enjoy. But those who turn to idols will have much pain. I will not offer blood to those idols or even speak their names. No, the Lord is all I need. He takes care of me. My share in life has been pleasant. My part has been beautiful. I praise the Lord because he advises me. Even at night, I feel his leading. I keep the Lord before me always. Because he is close by my side, I will not hurt. So I rejoice and I'm glad. Even my body has hope because you will not leave me in the grave. You will not let your Holy One rot. You will teach me how to live a holy life. Being with you will fill me with joy. At your right hand, I will find pleasure forever. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Joyce Evangeline Gratton uh, was born in Rutherford Island on the 4th of May, 1960, uh, to Billy and Mariah. She was a third out of five children that they had and is survived by her mother, her brother Sam, and two sisters, Lynn and Jill. Elaine's, Elaine, Jill's identical twin, died in 2002. Evangeline, by the way, you'll see that on the order of service, is a family name. I asked about it because it is such a beautiful name. Uh, it came from her aunt, Mariah's sister, who died when she was very young, just aged two and a half, but such a beautiful name. The family were all brought up on Newry Street and went to Ive Primary School here in the town. Joyce got the 11 plus and went to the academy. She was bright, she was clever, uh, she was gifted in so many ways, creative, artistic, a reader, musical. Uh, I was told there's, uh, there was an old piano keyboard in the house that she used to sit down and play, and she wouldn't be at it very long uh, before she could hammer out a tune so she could play by ear. Wonderful gift to be able to do. And because the family were all of an age, uh, five children under five years of age, they were great company for one another growing up, 
Uh, the four girls love tennis. I'm not sure if Sam played tennis with the girls. Maybe he did, but they could be found playing tennis just at the back of the high school, and there was great competition among them. Oh. It wasn't all games, though. There was work to be done as well. 107 Uri Street had a large plot behind it, and Billy filled it with uh, fruit and veg and potatoes, and all that had to be dug and picked and packed and uh, sold and moved on. So the family were conscripted into, into that work. After Joyce finished school, she did different jobs. She worked in down shoes in Banbridge. Uh, she, she stitched at the Rathryland factory here in town, just over at the site where the Eurospar is now. She did different cleaning jobs, care assistant. Uh, in, the, in the factory here in Rathryland, she, was, uh, she, was, um, she made blazers and those uh, um, coloured inserts that you put into jeans, uh, the flares that everybody wore uh, back in the time, and she was very good at it. She, her creative side really coming out there. She was also good at quiz shows, I'm told. Recently, her and Helen were watching one at the house, and she knew every question to the quiz show. Bang, 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 all of the questions. So she turned to Helen and says, I'm good, aren't I? And uh, Helen had to admit that she's good, and then she confessed, well, it was a repeat. She'd seen the show, <laughs> seen the show before. Um, but what she definitely wasn't good at, uh, again, I'm told, was cooking. She would just burn everything. She'd hand Helen her tea with a sorry pet, uh, to which Helen would usually reply, I'm off to Granny's. Uh, so, but Maya loved her sausages. She did, she burnt the sausages as well, but Maya likes burnt sausages, so they went down uh, very well. Um, and Joyce loved Maya, can I, can I say that here uh, this morning? Maya, when I came to visit, uh, your name was central to our um, conversation that I had with your granny. You were constantly in our thoughts and very often in our prayers, and so I have no need to tell you this, but you were loved dearly by your granny. And Joyce was a caring lady. She cared about people. She had that side to her, that soft and compassionate side. Uh, she was um, constantly thinking about other people, and mostly the people in her world, the people in her life. In fact, most of the conversations I did have with Joyce revolved around, either by text or in person, revolved around her asking me to pray for someone. Would you pray for such and such a one? She did. She cried a burden for people, usually a family member who was unwell or someone going for a checkup or, or just something like that. It was, it was kind of ironic, I thought, that a woman so unwell herself should care so much about other people. Um, that was Joyce. She was other-centered. She was thinking of someone else. There's always somebody worse off, she would say. And uh, if you'd ask her how she was, you'd always get back, I'm fine, and how are you? So she'd turn it around. Um, um, Joyce was unwell for a good part of her life. She was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, aged 40. She was also a type 2 diabetic. And as a result of the injections she would have to have for the arthritis, she developed an autoimmune condition, which really meant she couldn't be out and about in the same way as everybody else could be out and about for fear of catching something. And to top it all, she got cancer. Just six weeks ago, she thought she had a sore back, thought it was sciatica, an old sciatica problem returning. It was, in fact, stage four cancer that had spread to the bone. But with all her ailments, she really wasn't one to complain. And I remember visiting um, uh, Billy, her granddad, and he was the same. He, despite being very unwell, he was, wasn't one to complain. Joyce was a Christian woman. Faith was central to her identity. And again, anyone who knew Joyce knew that. 
And that was the other topic of conversation you could be sure of having when you called to the house. It was family or faith. You'd be sure of one, of one usually both of those two coming up. She, she loved other things. She loved sport and tennis and darts and snooker and quiz shows and all of that. But all of that was secondary to what was primary in her life. And the other day I asked her, when I visited her, what her favorite Bible passage was. Psalm 16, she said, without a hesitation. Sarah read it beautifully to us earlier. And when I read it to her, I hadn't read it for a while, I could, I could see why it, it was her favorite. It, because it contains two themes that run right through the life of this woman. Acknowledgement and assurance. A public acknowledgement of God's goodness to her in this life and a confident assurance of God's blessing to her in the next life. Those are the two themes that run through that psalm and those are the two themes that run through Joyce's life. The man who wrote the psalm was David, King David, and he has put pen to paper to publicly acknowledge the source of all the good things he has in this life. It's God, he says. Every blessing I have, he says it comes from God. Apart from you, he wrote, I have no good thing. My share in this life has been pleasant. My part has been beautiful. David is just grateful to God for what he has. And I saw that in Joyce, that that same attitude that she, despite her challenges in life was grateful you could hear it in her when she spoke uh, the other day just lying in her couch in great pain uh, just thanking Helen for attending to her Helen was just making sure she was um, comfortable and that she had a wee drink of water thank you Pat thank you she was gracious and I was no sooner home from that uh, visit when I got a wee text. Seamus, thank you so much for your visit today. I was really blessed. I think I was the one that was blessed. Another message, I, I scrolled down through the, the chat I would have with her. And I came across, uh, I came across a couple of other texts that expressed this gratefulness of heart. Hello, Seamus. Bit of good news. It was an answer to one of her many prayers for her family, and so she shared the news in the text, and she finished with, praise the Lord, Seamus, and thank you so much for your faithful prayers. God bless. And then another message she wrote to acknowledge God's help in in a certain situation, and finished with, I am really enjoying the Bible study, Seamus. They are a great group. She attended a wee Bible study with members of this church on 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 a on a Sunday night. And thank you for your prayers, Seamus. God bless you. So, so gratefulness, appreciation, acknowledgement ran through her life as they run through the lives of God's people because God's people know the source of their blessings in this life. They come from a good and loving God. And she saw that. She recognized that. And she was very clear in acknowledging that. And also, another theme in this psalm was a confident assurance of God's blessing in the next life. That too, David has written into this psalm. He says, you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. That was simply in other ways, it was an assurance that that death wouldn't be the end for him, but that God would raise him from the dead to an eternity in his presence, where he would experience pleasures forevermore, eternal pleasures at his right hand. And Joyce Scratton held that same conviction, that firm assurance of heaven when she died. What a wonderful thing to hold in life. But on what basis did she hold that assurance? And that's a fair question. Because there, 
There kind of needs to be a basis for such a claim. Was it on the basis, well, that everybody goes to heaven when they die? No, it wasn't. It's not the case. The Bible is very clear on that. Joyce herself would have told you that if, had, had you asked her. Now, she wasn't a preachy person, but she would have told you what the Bible says. There's no automatic pass to heaven. Was it because she was a good person and she was a good person, a kind mother, uh, a caring grandmother, a good daughter, a good sister, a loyal friend? Was it, was it on that basis that she lived her life well? It wasn't on that basis either. Joyce knew she wasn't getting to heaven because of her measure of goodness. She knew that her measure of goodness fell short of what it would take. She knew that everybody's measure of goodness, however good they are, it falls short. And he, she, she could have quoted, and she wrote it out in one of her, her files, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Well, then why was she so sure? Why did she hold this conviction? Why was it in the days leading up to her death did she not worry? What was the basis of this confidence? It was based upon something that happened a long time ago, 2,000 years ago. A man who'd lived a perfect life was punished for things he didn't do. Jesus Christ, dying horribly on a Roman cross, was paying the price for Joy Scratton's free entry to heaven. And Joyce Grattan, over 30 years ago, at a mission, a little Quaker church in Rutherford Island, heard that message about Jesus loving her so much and dying for her sin, and she believed it, and she accepted that offer of salvation. That was the basis. And that day, I think earlier that day, she'd been walking past Willie Patterson's shop and saw a notice just taped up to the window about the mission. She says, I'm going to go to that. I'm going to go. It was kind of an on the spur of the moment decision. Yet I warrant you that behind that spur of the moment decision was years and years of wrestling with how to respond to Jesus' offer of salvation. But that was the moment she decided she would do something about it. And that night, or one of the nights of the mission, we don't know, Joyce was saved. Her sins were forgiven, and her past, and many of you know her past, was healed. She received God's peace in place of the turmoil she had in life. She received God's help to overcome the sin that had previously enslaved her. And so began a new chapter in this woman's life. One marked out by devotion to God and love for others. We see that devotion expressed in the the files, take a look at them on your way out. What you won't know is she spent lots of money buying books to explore her faith, to try and understand her faith. And now she's gone. Last Saturday evening was just the turn of a new page in the next chapter of Joyce's life, eternal life. She is here, absent from the body, but present with the Lord. And her story is remarkable, really, but it's not unusual. Because all over the world, countless people are obeying God's command to come to him in simple faith and accept him as our Savior, receiving forgiveness of sin and new life in Christ. 
And the reason why I've taken this little bit of time to tell you her story is because God commands all people to repent and believe, to turn to him. It's a command. It's not an invitation. Because one day, your remains will lie in a place like this and gathered here will be the people you have built relationships with throughout the rest, the course of your life. But where will your soul be while others mourn your passing? The only basis for it being in heaven, the Bible tells us, is a saving relationship with God's Son, Jesus Christ. I have to tell you that. I have to tell you what the Bible says. And so why don't you, if this is something you, like Joyce, perhaps have been wrestling with for years, make a decision. Go talk to a minister. Go back to church. Pick up a Bible. Take a step of faith towards the one who loved you and gave his life for you. Let me pray with us. Father, we thank you for the good shepherd who loves us, who over the course of our life longs for us to come to you, has made the way possible for us to come to you, and is waiting on us taking that first step. We thank you for your patience and your kindness. And we pray, Lord God, that you would just grant each person who has not already taken that step to take it. Say, I'm going to do that. That's something I'm going to do before this week is out. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Just as we close, I want to, on behalf of the family, thank uh, Drs. McGaw and Erwin. They have been terrific in their care of Joyce. Also, the district nurses and Life and Time, the family, deep appreci- deeply appreciate uh, their work. We'll sing our second hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd.
And so we ask, as we take our leave of one another, we pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit would be with us all, now and evermore. Amen.